So this is a let's play of Storm of Zaheer, the third and final official campaign for Neverwinter Nights 2 for PC. Uh, this is a slightly different campaign from the first two, which are both more... Uh, they're more like Baldur's Gate. They are intended to be uh, stories. Storm of Zaheer is more of a tactical game. There is a story, but it's not really much more than just an excuse to uh, go around uh, beating stuff up in a sort of an exotic location. It's much more similar to Icewind Dale, um, if those older games, where, again, you create your entire party, the NPCs that you meet that you um, don't really join your party. There are actually some that do join your party, but they don't. only one of them actually has any additional dialogue, so it's really kind of irrelevant. The... Uh, focus of the party that I've built is that they're all elves and they all have the same deity just so I can get better bonuses from the recitation spell. It's sort of a theme group. Uh, one of the different other differences between Storm of Zaheer and the two previous campaigns is the crafting system works a little differently. Um, and because it works differently the system now allows you to enchant bows much better than you could before. But anyway, we start here on the ship. Um, why we're on the ship is never explained. We're just on a ship going to Samarok, which is, uh, is near the jungles of Chalt. This is sort of one of the more exotic Forgotten Realms settings. Um, it actually, the game actually forces you to go back to the Sword Coast yet again. So it's, you know, like they started in an exotic place and then put you back in the, the same vanilla stuff. So it's, that's kind of annoying. But um, we... This is, does not have any connection to the original campaign. Your character here is not related to the character in the original campaign, though there are some crossovers uh, between the this and the original campaign. And there actually, you can sort of guess at a, what might be considered a canonical ending to um, Mask of the Betrayer as well, because there's one character from that game that shows up here. Um, Captain here is just telling us that there have been some problems on the ship, um, and there's a pop-up here for the tutorial showing that there are, you can now, if you're in a conversation with someone, use the skills of all your party members. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, you go over to here, the party manifest, and you register your party. I'm actually going to load a save with everything all set up, so you don't ha I don't have to show you trying to build these characters. I've linked the builds in the video description if you want to see what how I've actually constructed these characters. But I'm going to load a game here and be right back. So here is our intrepid group. I've actually made a couple switches. The favored soul uh, switched his armor with the... Um, druid, so that the druid has um, the better armor, since the druid is the tank and the favorite soul is just sitting here in leather. Um, to go over the party briefly, Asatam here is a rogue at first, and he has enough int that he'll keep getting all the rogue skills, so he should be able to cover all the locks and traps. He'll eventually be an eldritch knight as well, and he's sort of our utility character. He captures a lot of just sort of the basic things that I didn't couldn't cover in the other characters. Uh, he's also the only arcane, real arcane caster in the group. The second character, Napro, is just a vanilla favorite soul. I actually picked this, this deity in the all-elf party so that I could have a favorite soul with a deity that gave a favorite weapon of that was a, long, a ranged weapon. Um, since Storm of Zaheer makes ranged weapons more effective, um, and a lot of the fights are in sort of close quarters, it's really hard to have uh, a lot of melee characters, and it's much more effective to have sort of a front line and a back line. In this case, I've reduced the front line to one character, um, because this group can cast a lot of summons as well. The third character here is Selic, who is a bard and fighter now, will be an arcane archer later, the only real non-caster in the group, um, other than just the token bard levels. And the last character is Aza, who's a druid and will be the tank. Um, Aza also has an animal companion, like all druids, and there's a feat that was added in this expansion, which lets you make your animal companion a dinosaur. Um, 
the dinosaurs are fairly vicious uh, at low levels, at least. Like all animal companions, they're really useless at high levels. But this is, for the most part, a low-level campaign, so it's very helpful to have this character, this additional piece of meat in the party, um, because it means that I essentially have two front row tanks, one of which can die and I don't really care about it. Um, there's a cutscene after you sort of assemble your party here and you go below decks. I'm actually going to skip it. It's kind of pointless and stupid. Um, but the game does remind you before you go downstairs to check what you have memorized. And I will do that as long uh, because when you get to the, the location, you're going to have a fight, and you need to be ready for it. Um, I've memorized a lot of sleep spells on these characters, um, as well as just some basic useful things. The characters who don't actually have to memorize individual spells uh, don't have the option to go into the spell book in this conversation. Um, if you'll notice here, there are the you can see all your characters in this dialogue screen, and since your characters are different, they have different dialogue options. Um, so the mages, well, the mage and the druid each can memorize spells, while these ones can't. We'll see a lot of this, and essentially, if you see a conversation like this, and you see somebody with a little bubble in their description uh, next to their picture, uh, it means they have additional options in that dialogue. So I will uh, join you on the far side of the cutscene. So, we're back. Uh, short version of the cutscene. Um, there was a storm. The ship was probably sabotaged and we crashed. It's really very boring and I can show it in a separate video if it, somebody actually wants to see it. Um, anyway, there's a little bit of dialogue here and um, there's not really very much to say about it. There's not much you can change in this dialogue. Um, so you can just sort of go through it. More or less, we're just talking about the fact that we have company over there. And of course, you know, being that this is not really a, a, a big game for talking, uh, they're of course going to have to fight them. So um, we can sort of plug our fellow uh, um, fellow travelers for uh, a little bit of um, extra equipment and then just tell them to go to it. Now I'm just going to skip the uh, the tutorial there. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so we just go through here and depending on what skills you have you'll get different items from these little piles of debris. Most of which is absolute junk. So uh, don't lose too much sleep over ma making sure you get absolutely everything. Um, and you don't need real high skills to get most of it. And, you know, we go through here and we grab stuff. And essentially you can try and find a full set of equipment, but the reality is that mostly what you want is just a weapon for everybody um, so that uh, they can do something. We'll get some real equipment in a second. Actually, I'm going to give her that and that and give the spear to her and give him the sword. And she will then cast flame weapon on both of them. So, let's get to it. Oh, I'm going to make sure she's singing. And as you can see, sleep more or less just tears them apart because they uh, all of the, the weaker enemies suddenly uh, cease to uh, fight you. 
and you can kill them instantly with the attacks. Now you'll notice that I've left the um, characters on actually casting spells. Uh, it really doesn't matter for these fights. They are just way too easy. Um, and you can actually just get on with it if you want. Um, or you can sit there and watch Volo try to talk them out of fighting you and fail. Uh, but for the most part, you can pretty much all you have to do is clean up all these goblins. And we're actually taking a little bit of damage here, so uh, heal up. And once more, we provoke the next fight. Tribesmen cannot come to the aid of their elder. They're all dead. And there's a total of four groups that you have to fight. Um, the first three have a, a champion of some sort in them. The uh, last one is just the weak guys. And the weak guys more or less die um, instantly to just casting sleep on them. So it's really a very easy fight. And we'll just stop the video here and continue next time.